Fire Emblem Engage features a colorful cast of characters, but these five units stand out above the rest, with the ability to impact your playthrough very early on and be a worthwhile investment to the later parts of the game due to a mix of their availability, personal skills, and growth rates. The growth rates of the classes and the units themselves are provided by Serenus Forest, an amazing Fire Emblem fan site for all information that you would want pertaining to Fire Emblem Engage. Link in the description below. The first unit with insane potential is Saline. She joins your party very early on in Chapter 4 and she's paired up with Celica and is immediately going to be a big part of your strategy in higher difficulties. Warp Ragnarok is an absurdly good skill and is pivotal in meeting the many very early challenges of maddening difficulty. Armored units, especially in maddening difficulty, are very scary early on without a mage. They will often have inflated defense stats and some may possess skills to negate effective weapons, like rapiers and hammers. <laughs> the real kicker is that armored units cannot be afflicted with break, which can really hurt your overall ability to safely take down troublesome foes. And this is where mages come in. Magic is very important early on as tank busters in this game, and Selene is one. And while you can equip Celica's ring onto anybody, Selene seems to be the most effective user, especially early on in the game. Selene's base stat growths are as follows. To those of you new to Fire Emblem, stat growths are essentially the percentage chance that your unit will gain a point in this stat whenever they level up. The higher the number, the better. Saline has 50 health, 35 strength, 25 magic, 30 dex, 45 speed, 50 luck, 30 defense, and 40 resistance. She has good all-around growths with especially great speed and resistance. She also starts out with proficiencies in two weapons right out the gate, swords and tomes, making her a more flexible unit for your party's needs whenever you get to the point where you can class advance or class change. Her base class bumps up her stat growths to as follows. 50 health, 40 strength, 35 magic, 35 dex, 50 speed, 70 luck, 35 defense and 50 resistance. She starts out at level 5, giving you plenty of time to hopefully be RNG blessed. Lastly, her personal skill, Gentle Flowers, is an absurdly powerful skill in the early game. Anyone within two spaces of Saline gets a 50% healing bonus when a recovery item like a Volnary is used. This pairs off spectacularly well with another unit that we'll be discussing in just a second, and that unit is Citrine, a Brodian mage that joins at the beginning of Chapter 7. Her personal skill, Generosity, allows her to heal adjacent allies for the same amount of health that she recovers whenever she is using a healing item. Using a healing item with Citrin two spaces away from Saline means that you're potentially going to be healing up to 5 units with a buffed recovery item. The immense value of this cannot be understated, especially for maddening difficulty. She is a mage, which makes her a tank buster for those pesky armored units, especially early on in the game when you don't have a lot of tools to fight armored units yet. And mages in this game also ignore terrain bonuses from enemies. Citrin's base growths are as follows. 45 HP, 10 strength, 40 magic, 25 dex, 30 speed, 25 luck, 20 defense, and 40 resistance. With a stat line like hers, she'll be a hard hitter in your team in no time. Her default class, Mage, pushes her growth to be 45 HP, 10 strength, 65 magic, 30 dex, 30 speed, 30 luck, 20 defense, and 65 resistance. These growths pushes her into being a glass cannon with the utility of that personal skill. Next up, everyone's favorite point of discussion for insane potential, and that's Anna. Hang on, what? Anna's passive lets her potentially make your team 500 gold every time she defeats a foe based on her luck stat. There's a caveat to this. Depending on the difficulty and the amount of time you want to do skirmishes, money may not be a problem for you. If you're on a stricter run, then this passive could be a difference maker in how you progress within Fire Emblem Engage. This personal skill is held back by her luck stat, so let's look at her base growth rates. Anna has the following. 55 HP, 15 strength, 50 magic, 50 dex, 50 speed, 45 luck, 20 defense, and 35 resistance. She has some crazy high magic, dex, speed, and luck growths, but start out as an axe fighter, which provides her with the following stat growths. 80 HP, 35 strength, 50 magic, 50 dex, 50 speed, 45 luck, 25 defense, and 35 resistance. If you put a little time and experience into her, she is going to be a monster. And based on her high luck growth, it seems the payout from her personal skill will happen more often than you think. She comes in a paralogue right after chapter 6, so still pretty early on in the game, and she starts out at level 5 giving you plenty of time to maximize that RNG. Oh, Before I continue with the rest of my list, which units is putting in the most work for you in your playthrough? Let us know in the comments below and if you're having a good time so far. Support this channel by giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more Fire Emblem Engage content. Thanks! Next up is a no-brainer in terms of potential. Recruitable in the first unlockable paralogue unit right after Chapter 5, Jean is a martial monk with the personal skill of expertise, which grants him enhanced growth stats when leveling up. What this means is that every time Jean levels up, the RNG for stat growth will trigger twice. The first time, let's say Jean levels up in strength but did not get speed, the game records that strength and re-rolls on the speed again. And this is not just speed, it's any stat that Jean did not roll successfully on the first go-around. So, when you level up, you essentially get to do the RNG process twice. 
twice, keeping the best of both worlds. Are you fucking serious? He also starts out at level 1, boosting this personal skill even farther. Jones' base growths are as follows. 50 HP, 20 strength, 20 magic, 35 dex, 40 speed, 45 luck, 20 defense, and 35 resistance. Not the greatest overall offensively, but good speed and dex. Starting out as a martial monk boosts his base stats to as follows. 50 HP, 30 strength, 45 magic, 35 dex, 40 speed, 55 luck, 30 defense, and 55 resistance. This makes him much more well-rounded, although he is lacking in strength. He's still going to be somewhat really easy to level up in harder difficulties while still being very useful because he is a martial monk. Martial monks can utilize chain guards, which at the correct time will be vital in surviving some of the more challenging enemies that maddening mode will throw at you. While at the same time, giving Jean access to staffs making him a lot easier to generate XP. But unlike the clerics of older games, he can still clean up kills and break spellcasters and thieves alike. By being very versatile right as you get him, he ends up being one of the best growth units that Fire Emblem has ever seen. Lastly, I did not see this unit coming, but they bring so much to the table that I really can't ignore this. At the start of Chapter 6, you unlock your first thief within the game, Yunaka. Hiya, papaya. In this game, you don't need a thief to open up a treasure chest per se. However, the dagger weapon type has changed and is a lot stronger now. Anytime a unit is hit with a dagger, they get poisoned. Poison makes it so that the unit takes more damage and this can stack. Daggers also have the versatile feature of being able to attack from one range and two range, making Yunaka a a perfect unit to clean off a kill or to set up a kill for somebody else while at range. Yunaka's is personal skill, Train to Kill, gives her an additional 15% crit chance whenever she is on a terrain that provides her with a void. Now, that may not seem like a crazy thing, but is very synergistic with her base class of Thief, as that is a covert unit that provides the special ability of doubling any terrain bonuses that the unit possesses. To go even further, with a very minor investment into Yunaka's starting weapon, the Iron Dagger, by putting in the Forge once or twice and then engraving it with Martha's insignia you can amp up her crit rate even further and do a ton of damage early on at range. And that's not even the best part. In the same chapter that you get her, she learns how to use a stave. So now she gets even more utility. Not only can she stave off enemies, be a dodge tank, or do crazy chip damage with her upgraded knife, now she has an extra supportive function in terms of healing or warping somebody. Yunaka is so versatile, and we still haven't talked about her base growth stats, which are as follows. 50 HP, 35 strength, 25 magic, 40 dex, 45 speed, 25 luck, 15 defense, and 45 resistance. Augmented by her thief class, her growth rates are as follows. 55 HP, 45 strength, 25 magic, 60 dex, 60 speed, 40 luck, 30 defense, and 50 resistance. So not only does she have good utility right away, but she also comes with good growth rates. Like what the heck, this unit is simply amazing and it helps that her personality is a lot of fun too. All five of these units have insane potential. This is through the lens of maddening difficulty, so it should be helpful no matter what difficulty you're on. These opinions may change once I beat the game, but as of right now, based on all the other early game units that you get, these five seem the most promising. If you're interested in learning about the 8 class types and the specifics of what they do, check out this video on screen right now. It may come in handy, it may even save your playthrough. My name is Varsana, and I'll see you in the next video.